All right. One of the things that people sometimes struggle with in this class is how to figure out the area moment of inertia of a composite section. So here's a simple sample problem. This is just a T section made out of two individual boxes. One of them is 30 millimeters high and 120 millimeters wide. And I'm going to call this box one. Box number two is 50 millimeters high and 30 millimeters wide. In order to figure out the area moment of inertia, you have to start by figuring out the location of the centroid. So we'll start right there. The expression for the location of a centroid is the sum of some areas times some distances over sum of some areas. Now, the areas are the areas of the individual boxes, and the distances are the distances of the centroid of the individual boxes from some uh, set location. To make things simple, my set location is going to be the bottom. Here I've got Y shown as being positive upwards. And the centroid of the second box will be there, and the centroid of the first box will be right there. So let's write out some numbers here, and then we'll go ahead and finish the calculation. So A1 is going to be 120 millimeters times 30 millimeters, and that's 3,600 millimeters squared. A2 is going to be 30 millimeters times 50 millimeters, and that gives me 1,500 millimeters squared. Y1 is the distance of this point right here from the bottom, so it's 50 millimeters plus half of 30, you add that up, and you get 65 millimeters. Y2 is going to be just that distance right there, half of 50, that's 25 millimeters. Okay, so we've got all the parts put together. Let's go ahead and calculate the centroid. Well, let's see, y bar equals a1 y1 plus a2 y2 over a1 plus a2. Right, 3600 millimeters squared times 65 millimeters plus 1500 millimeters squared times 25 millimeters. Hopefully I'm staying inside the frame there. Plus, or divided by I should say, 3600 millimeters plus 1500 millimeters. If you do that whole calculation, you'll find out that Y bar is 53.235 millimeters. Well, anytime we calculate a number, we need to stop and ask ourselves if this makes sense. Well, the centroid of the entire box, or the entire shape, must be between the centroid of the lower box and the centroid of the upper box. If it's outside of that region, that's not a plausible answer. What we just calculated was the centroid of our composite shape is right about there, with that being 53.235 millimeters. And that definitely looks plausible. That looks like that could be the right answer. So now that we've got all this, now we can go ahead and figure out the area moment of inertia of the composite shape. Since I'm dealing with a relatively small board here, I'm going to erase some of the things we don't need anymore. There we go. Now, the expression for the area moment of inertia of the composite shape is just the contribution of the individual boxes added up. They add them up in a fairly specific way here. There's two expressions in braces there, one for each box. Now if I had a shape that had more than one box, or more than two boxes, I'd have more than two expressions in brackets. Once you can do this calculation for two boxes, you can do this calculation for any number of boxes. The only difference is just the length of a lot of the calculation. So I1 figure this out. It's 1 12th B1 H1 cubed. Okay, that's 1 12th times 120 millimeters times 30 millimeters cubed. Okay, well right away, 
see that's 10. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, so you add all the zeros at the end of it, and you get 270,000 millimeters to the fourth. Let's do I2 now. Same thing, 112 B H cubed. So I get 1 over 12 times 30 millimeters times 50 millimeters cubed. Okay, and again, we see that that's going to be, if I divide through by 6, I get 5. Two. 5 times 6 is 30, and five times, or 6 times 2 is 12. So go ahead and calculate all that, and you get 312, or 312,500 millimeters to the fourth. Okay, A1 and A2 we've already got. Now, what are the Ds? The Ds are the distance between the centroids of the individual boxes and the centroids of the entire composite shape. So D1 going to be right there, I'm sorry, D2 is right there, and D1 is right there. Now, the drawing's getting a little busy, but I think you can see what's going on. So, D1 is going to be 65 millimeters minus 53.235, and if you work that out, you get, um, let's see, 11.7765. And D2 is simply that distance right there, the distance from the centroid, minus the, the entire composite shape, minus that. Now, I'm doing something that looks maybe a little suspicious here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reverse this to make sure I get positive numbers both calculations, and I'm actually reversing the order that I do this in. Now normally, this would be absolutely forbidden. This is pretty high on the list of things you shouldn't do. By the way, if you calculus, you get 28.235. Okay. The reason I can get away with this here is that these numbers are eventually going to be squared. So whether those are positive or negative, they're going to be positive at the end. This is the only time in your entire school career probably, you get to play fast and loose with uh, positive and negative signs. But we can get away with it here. Now, again, I'm running out of board space, so I'm going to go ahead and erase this. Let's plug all those numbers in. So we get 270,000 plus A1, 3,600 times D1 squared. Well, D1 was 11.765, I believe. Let me check. Yeah, 765 millimeters squared. So that's the contribution of box 1. I of box 1 plus this extra term here, this A1 D1 squared, that accounts for the fact that the centroid of box 1 is not on the centroid of the entire composite shape. And we'll just do the same thing for box number two. We have 312,500 plus, now the area there, 1,500 millimeters squared times uh, the distance, D2, that I just erased here, 0.235. And go ahead and work all that out, you get the first term is 768270, that's for box number one, and the contribution of the second box Now I'm working this to five significant figures as I normally do, and my screen just went to sleep on me. If you uh, add those two up, you get grand total two, two seven six six. There you go, and there's the answer to five significant figures.